Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dusty Sheet channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. And this here, this monstrosity is a quadcopter or uh, a drone, if you will. Uh, yeah, this might be more of a drone than most of the quadcopters I have on my channel. As it, uh, well, it, oh, it doesn't have a GPS, so. No, not a, not a drone. It's a quadcopter, NA videography quadcopter. It has a 3D gimbal at the front, as you can see. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have a camera in it. Actually, I use that camera mainly in this, this gimbal. Okay, so uh, this is an, uh, a very old quadcopter uh, from Hobby King, Quantum XJ470. And some of you might actually know this quadcopter. This was from a time when uh, Hobby King was a player in the multi-rotor scene, <laughs> right? Uh, the motors themselves, these are also from Hobby King, Quantum Elites, uh, quite expensive motors. Uh, but they perform very, very well. And these propellers, the carbon fiber propellers, are also from Hobby King. And um, I think uh, all of the rest of uh, this build is not from Hobby King. Okay, so um, again, this quadcopter is pretty old. And uh, now and again, I overhaul the electronics in this quadcopter, which is what we'll be doing in this video as well. Now, um, let me see. Yeah, the motors are still perfect. Uh, last time I upgraded the ESCs and those are still perfect as well. However, the flight controller, which lives over here, is an F3 flight controller. And it works. It, it works. Um, but I'd like to be able to run the latest beta flight firmware on this quadcopter, right? As you would. And I also want to run these, uh, these programmable LEDs. And that's not possible in the latest Betaflight firmware. You can run F3 boards, but you don't have access to programmable LEDs anymore. And uh, yeah, the, the, this uh, flight controller is pretty old by now as well. So I want to upgrade it to a more modern one, an F7 actually. And... Um, yeah, some other bits and pieces as well. In this video, we'll go over those upgrades. Uh, this will be a short video, an overview of my upgrades. In the next video in uh, this series, we'll uh, take it out for a uh, test flight. So, um, yeah, let's dive into it. Let's see what I bought to uh, upgrade this quadcopter. So, it'll come as no surprise to you that uh, the first thing I'll upgrade is the flight controller itself, right? That F3 flight controller is going to be replaced by this, the Matek F722 Special Edition, yeah! And I actually did a review of this flight controller and I'll have a link uh, up here to my review of this flight controller. It is uh, arguably uh, the Rolls Royce of flight controllers at this moment. And it also has a PDB as you can tell. Over here is where you'd connect your LiPo to the terminals and at every corner you got motor or ESC outputs. Obviously USB port over here. And it has a memory card slot for your black box logging. Obviously it has an uh, OSD. And uh, yeah, my uh, previous, uh, the, the old F3 flight controller didn't have an OSD, so that's definitely a very big upgrade, right? It has a current sensor over here, so I'll be able to see, uh, well, what my uh, amp draw and uh, my current voltage is. Very useful stuff. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my current setup has a separate F3 flight controller and a separate uh, Matek, by the way, PDB. So, uh, yeah, that'll um, ease up the installation a little bit as well, I guess. Not a whole lot, but um, yeah, cool stuff. So, um, again, uh, take a look at my uh, full review of this flight controller. I have a few of these in use by now, and they work flawlessly. And um, Matek always provides... Uh, Excellent, excellent technical specifications and samples of how to uh, configure them in Betaflight or INAV. To my knowledge, uh, they do that best of all flight controller manufacturers, which is why I use a lot of their stuff. 
Okay, the next thing I'll change is uh, the module in my uh, transmitter and the receiver in the quadcopter. Now, I deliberately said change and not upgrade because, uh, well, the R9M system, it actually works. I've had it in use for a couple of months and it does work. However, the Mambo Jambo with versions of the firmware for the module and versions of firmware for the receivers, it's a bit blah. Okay, yeah, I'm not happy with that. Uh, maybe it's because it's a relatively new product. Uh, maybe they should have just, uh, well, tested it a bit more before, before releasing it. Oh well, uh, yeah, the R9M uh, system is relatively uh, low cost, as you probably know. So if you want a slightly more long range uh, setup, um, yeah, it's an option. Right, and um, this is the old, ver well old, <laughs> not that old, but there is a newer version um, and I'll have a link to that in the description down below. In fact, I'll have links to uh, most anything I'll uh, mention in this uh, video down below. Just check it out. Also, uh, my old setup for this uh, this uh, quantum quadcopter. Anyway, so um, I'll be installing this uh, tiny, tiny receiver. And um, I'll probably replace its antenna with this one. Came with this antenna, by the way. Um, I actually bought this module with three receivers. It was a package deal. And it also came with three of these alternate antenna. Are they upgrades? Well, uh, in my case, in this quadcopter, these are a bit handier to install. So I'll, I'll be using this one. Oh, by the way, if you are wondering, uh, the new version of the R9M, its biggest um, fe new feature is that you actually can use uh, 3S LiPos for, to power it. This old one, you don't want to use 3S LiPos, up to 2S. And if you accidentally <laughs> run it on 3S, uh, you'll uh, burn it up. So uh, yeah, okay, so that's the biggest uh, in improvements they made for the, the 2019 version of these R9M modules. And uh, I'll link the new version of these in the description down below. There's no use in uh, ordering an old version now, I'd say. The next thing I'll upgrade, and this definitely is an upgrade, is the VTX. This is a brand new AKK Tech VTX, and not just any VTX. It is the AKK FX2 Dominator. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, the manual says a long range VTX. Yeah, this VTX is capable of 2000 milliwatts. What? <laughs> 2000? Um, yeah. So if you take your quadcopter out for a flight and you take some eggs, you can <laughs> cook your eggs <laughs> with this. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, that's a very high output. Now that doesn't mean that this VTX would have, say, twice the range as a as a 1000 milliwatt. Uh, you, you are probably aware of this, but in terms of penetration and definitely the range will improve uh, from this uh, VTX. But mainly if you fly behind trees and there's a good chance that you at some point, maybe inadvertently, fly behind some trees because you'll uh, lose orientation a bit maybe and uh, you uh, simply haven't seen there that there are a few trees behind you and your quadcopter. So in those circumstances a higher output VTX definitely uh, helps. Now the VTX I have currently in my quadcopter is an Aonway VTX and it actually works fine. Uh, the maximum output of that VTX is 600 milliwatts and uh, well so far so good but this is just uh, a piece of ease of mind I guess and um, it has huge, it's really huge cooling blocks top and bottom and that's probably a good idea, right? Um, if it uh, if you've got your quadcopter sitting uh, idling before a takeoff, there's not a whole lot of airflow. So uh, yeah, with 2,000 uh, milliwatts, you want some uh, cooling for your VTX. All right, and the last thing I'll change, and this 
again is definitely an upgrade. This is the LiPo I used to use on this quadcopter and it, it works fine. It is a 4000 mAh 35 to 70C Turnigy Nanotech. And it's in good shape, it's still uh, completely square and that makes sense because this quadcopter doesn't pull a whole lot of amps. So yeah, this battery is in good shape. However, this is a newer type of LiPo and as you can see the capacity is a lot uh, bigger. 5200 mAh and uh, what is the C rating of this one? Does it actually say? 10C. Yeah, so uh, the, ra the C rating of this LiPo is lower. And that uh, works out uh, perfectly fine, or at least <laughs> we'll see. But it should work out perfectly fine because, again, this quad cutter simply doesn't pull a whole lot of amps, so you don't need that uh, enormous C rating. And uh, well, bigger capacity, and this lipo is slight, ever so slightly shorter. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but it's approximately half a centimeter uh, shorter. Um, which works actually works out better for my CG for the CG of uh, my quadcopter. With this lipo, it's slightly tail heavy, so I hope to be able to solve that with this lipo. Right, so uh, two reasons: bigger capacity and the CG should improve with this lipo. The weight is approximately the same, by the way. This one is slightly lighter, slightly lighter. Okay, but uh, I guess that this makes sense, right? You don't need uh, the C rating and capacity uh, is more useful in a quad cutter like this. And again, I was looking for a slightly shorter pack. Alright, so that's uh, all the upgrades. Uh, what you are looking at right now is my FPV camera. And that is, yeah, it's a slightly older camera. It is a Foxeer Monster version 2. Okay, so this is not the newest of cameras, but it's it's perfectly fine. I'm not going to upgrade it. I will make some kind of different camera mount. At the time I made this mount, I didn't have a 3D printer, but uh, and it, it, this works by the way. It's a foam foam block basically. But uh, well, I can do better right now. So, I'll make a new mount for that. And that's it. So, um yeah, um let me see. Uh, I'd like to clean up the wiring on this quadcopter a little as well and part of that will automatically happen because I don't have a, uh, a separate power distribution board and flight controller anymore so uh, that'll make things a little easier and um, yeah so uh, a little bit of soldering and a little bit of screwing and uh, then I should have myself a an updated quadcopter in the next video on this project uh, we'll go and fly it right and um, uh, let's hope it flies well. Okay, and if you have uh, questions or better still suggestions for this build, uh, please uh, hit me up a comment down below. And in a couple of days uh, we'll go and test fly this uh, updated XJ470. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.